so now what is the limit on the cyclotron we have seen recently that focusing of the magnetic field should decrease with it so if we want to achieve the vertical focusing magnetic field should, should decrease with radius that's why we introduce the gradient in the magnetic field however recall your formula of revolution time revolution time increases with increase in gamma so if we want to make revolution time constant gamma by magnetic field this ratio should remain constant means as gamma increases b should also increase and as gamma increases particle goes outer orbits means orbit with larger radius so magnetic field should increase with radius so for synchronism we have to have a magnetic field which increases with the radius while for focusing we should have a magnetic field which should decrease with radius so these are contrary requirements for running the cyclotron so classical cyclotron cannot reach beyond the 2% of the rest energy of the particle so in case of protons classical cyclotron can reach up to only 20 mega however we have heard that cyclotron can reach up to 800 mev of protons 500 mev protons or even the 1 gb of the protons energy how is it possible we see now as we know that magnetic field should increase with radius to keep the synchronism as gamma increases b should increase means with gamma increases b should increases and therefore with a radius magnetic field should increase this can be obtained using such configuration here instead of introducing the gradient field is varying asymmetrically asymmetrically means in this direction the field is varying here the pole caps are closer to each other we say this is the hill and here pole caps are farther from each other so this is the value in this region magnetic field will be lower in this region magnetic field will be higher so where the magnetic field will be higher this region increases with radius so effectively magnetic field becomes higher and higher and the outer orbits how hills and valley looks like so if we will go around theta for a constant radius r the pole gap will look like this so this is the valley and this is the hill so here the magnet uh, this is this is the hill so here the magnetic field is stronger here the magnetic field is weaker now how the vertical focusing can be achieved using this we see this now in a perfect circle if we have v theta here and if we generate a b theta the force will be zero however vertical in the vertical direction so this kind of configuration cannot give vertical force or vertical force if there is a angle between the b theta and v theta if there is certain angle then a vertical component or force can be generated using v theta and b theta so this type of technique is used by introducing the valley and hills how we can see here suppose this is the hill and this is the valley so at the transition region the magnetic field here it is a strong magnetic field a transition region there will be fringing and there will be fringing means 
magnetic field has some fringing effect on this V theta and this fringing effect generates a vertical focusing. How this fringing effect generates vertical focusing we will see in detail in later lectures. So this kind of focusing is obtained in the cyclotron. So here instead of perfect circle here the magnetic field will cause a small radius of curvature because it is a strong and here radius of curvature will be larger for the path so instead of complete circular path it has a scolap type of orbit and here you can see that v theta and v theta has certain angle between them and this leads to vertical force if anyhow we can generate a br means magnetic field in this direction also then vertical focusing can be even stronger and this can be also done if instead of a straight sector we make the spiral sector in a spiral sector we have now b theta as well as br so these two components make a very strong focusing mechanism available in the cyclotron in the vertical one extreme case may be there that we remove the magnetic field completely from the valley means we make b is equal to 0 in the valley means there is no magnet and then there is a strong magnet then there is no magnet then strong magnet then no magnet then strong magnet. this type of cyclotron is known as separated sector cyclotron and we are there is no magnet element here we can keep rf cavities for particle acceleration so even a single turn many rf cavities can be kept and this type of cyclotron is also known as ring cyclotron now if beam reaches up to the certain or desired energy level we have to extract the beam from the cyclotron how we can extract the beam of the cyclotron now you can see that at the outer orbit we can put a deflector this is an electrostatic deflector means it creates some electric field in the vicinity of this outer orbit so when particle reaches on this outer orbit with the desired energy this deflector deviates its path from the regular orbit path and it sends outside the orbit now here there should be a mechanism for shielding the magnetic field also and this shielding again produces some fringing at the edges and this fringing again focuses vertical vertical in the vertical plane so at the exit of cyclotron we get a vertically focused plane. the another technique for extraction is much simpler when we use the negative ion for, for acceleration when negative ion reaches in the outer orbit we can put a very thin carbon foil so loosely bound electrons stripped out from this ion due to scattering in this carbon stripper foil and these becomes positive ions such a simple case is take the H negative H negative means hydrogen with an extra electron when it accelerates and it reaches the carbon stripping foil it becomes proton means both of the electrons is lost by the H negative ion due to scattering in this carbon stripping foil and becomes the proton so same magnetic field which was bending in this direction to the negative ion a proton or positive ion will bend outside this so extraction will take place this is the picture of the first ever cyclotron built by the Lorenz and this is a modern cyclotron you can see that this is a separated sector cyclotron these are the magnets and here we are the drift space or no magnetic element this uh, cyclotron is in the triumph lab of Canada. now how the cyclotron journey started in India it is a very interesting story actually Meghnath Saha who was the uh, famous astrophysicist he thought that India should start its accelerator program because of this we can go advance in ad advances in the nuclear physics research this was just after the world war ii you can see that uh, 
in the early stage these persons thought about how the indian science can proceed one of his student basanti nath choudhary at that time was working with the lawyers who invented the cyclone so with help of nath choudhary meghnath saha got one cyclotron in india that was in institute of nuclear physics now this institute of nuclear physics has renamed as saha institute of nuclear physics in kolkata so that was the first cyclotron ever in india available to the research later on atomic energy commission mainly dr rajaramanna put efforts to make indigenous cyclotron in india because only then accelerator building capacity will be enhanced into the nation and we can make our own accelerators for our own research purposes and again you can see that this was in the early stage of 70s or later stage of 60s and at that time a k130 avf type cyclotron was built in the india at the variable energy cyclotron center in kolkata saha institute of nuclear physics and vcc has common campus and at that time you can think that the magnet weighs about 260 tons so building such a magnet such a huge magnet with required precision was a challenging job and this challenging job at that time was done by heavy engineering corporation ranchi so india that time had its own cyclotron later on a person harnam singh hans also put great efforts you should read this story in the given references and he bought a cyclotron for the chandigarh university from the rochester university and now vcc house is a k500 it is a superconducting cyclotron if you want to make higher and higher energy for the particles we need higher magnetic field b you can see in this lecture that t is directly proportional to b so for reaching up to very high energy we need higher magnetic field so superconducting magnets can reach to very higher magnetic field but superconducting technology is a very challenging technology we have to keep the magnets at liquid helium temperature so this is a very very typical technology now vcc houses a superconducting cyclotron k5 this is the biggest cyclotron in our nation and its magnet is 100 tons so we have 100 tons superconducting magnet in this accelerator cyclotron also have very Uh, large applications in the medical uh, area it can be used for therapy as well as diagnosis for diagnosis purpose it can produce various radio elements f18 in fdg technician 99 so these are very useful machines in the medical area also india right now have 19 medical cyclotrons vcc also has its own medical cyclotron and it is the biggest medical cyclotron in our nation again the references are same as was in the lecture one so you can go through these references for having a details on cyclotrons one of the proceeding in certain accelerator school is dedicated to linux and cyclotron so you will get very details of cyclotron in that proceeding next lecture we will see one more accelerator that is my